Hello. Back again, back again, back again. Right. Oh. Been working on these MPU4 boards using the Tuppany Bonanza program, but also also knew that there are test rooms out there for MPU4. Trouble is, they were done in the era before T cards. Now, don't know if you can see that rumble's a little bit unusual at the minute, but anyways. So having a look around for the, the test ROMs, I, I know there's an MPU4 test rig that was developed. They developed two versions of it, one for the Mod 2 and I think they developed a ROM revision for the Mod 4. But it was done quite a long time ago. I may be wrong, it may be just two. The programs are called UT2 and UT4. They're, MP, they're MPU4 test programs. Now, they're only about 8K in length. That card there supports a 128k ROM. Oh, well, fair enough. I'll ask around if there was a version of the test programs done for the later cards, and it turns out there wasn't. So, I had a fiddle with the emulator. I used the copy commands to make double up the 8k test ROM to 16k, then again and again to get 64k, and then I tried to double it again. To get a 128k image, I tried to run it in the ROM physically in the card and it wouldn't run. Asked around on the forums and said, no, there's not been a version that runs for the later cards. Well, actually, um, if I direct you to this. It is possible. It can be done. He was going to say 50 hertz failure because I've only got a PC power supply rigged into that. But, yeah. It does work. If I connected the proper power supply to this, it, pro it probably would start going through the test. It would probably crash out RS-232 test because I've not got anything in there. But yeah, it is possible to run them in as big a bloody ROM as you want. It's not entirely straightforward though, you have to do a couple of things. When you double up the 8K program, now I've done it the emulator for the first, I doubled the 8K to 16K, tried to run it to 16K and it ran fine. Tried to run it again, it a 32K image and it ran fine, 64, 128 and so on. But when you actually do it, burn it to an actual ROM, I don't think the address it likes the addressing or something. I, I I'm not entirely sure what it does with it, but anyway, there's a way you can get around of it. There's a way you can get around it. What you have to do is if you look, ugh, let's see if I, yeah, give me a second to that off. Yeah. yeah, what you have to do is you have to tie those two address lines there. You have to cut them off. This is for a 128k chip, remember, you have to cut them off, tie them to ground, and then A16 here you have to tie it to ground. And then the 128k chip will function as a 64k, and then, for some unknown reason, then it does run. It runs fine. As you can see from done there. It does mean you can only use the chip once. But I've actually gone one better than that. It gave me an idea. Hang on. Right. Uh, what to put that? Right, anyway. I took this wrong mouse if it's a different one. So you use a... For the one to a key board, so you use the... It's not focusing, but it's not very... It's a 27C040 chip anyway. And you just... Get better focus on this. Yeah, is it going to do it? It might do it. It's because I tend to shake, but I said those two pins there A17, A18, and A16 all tied to note, zero volts, and then it functions the 64k chip and runs. I don't know why the 128k chip doesn't run when you. When you double the 8K image up over and over and over again, so you've got 
a 64k image and then you double it again to make 128k. It doesn't work. I don't know why it doesn't work. Maybe it's something to do with checksums or something. But you would think it would work because it's only looking at 8k of the chip. But no, it doesn't work. But it did give me a crafty idea. Right. Got a different ROM in there now. It's exactly the same principle, but with one difference. A. 17 and 18 are tied to 0 volts again, they're tied to ground. But. You see, I've got a crocodile clip on pin 2 there. A16. And it's tied to 5 volt at the minute. So I'm going to power it up. This is what you get. Of course, let's see, 50 hertz failure. Now I'm going to switch off. So it's off. Right. I'm going to change this link to point to zero volts instead. Now instead of five volts pin, five volts pin two is going to be pointing to ground. Watch. <laughs> How cool is that? We have the beginnings of a multi-cart. So I've got one ROM there, but by selecting pin A16 I can have Top any nodger, or I can have the test room, which I think is pretty handy. And I think I could go one better than that again. I think if I could come up with some way to control A17 and A18 as well, we could have the meter clear test, we could have the real test, we could have both versions of the, the program. Whatever we want, we could have a proper multi car going on there. But I'd have to figure that out at the minute. At the minute what I'm intending to do with this is just put a switch on there somewhere. The switch between not and 5 volts and then solder it to that pin 2 there. But you can see that's working beautifully. We're firing away there like a trooper. Um, yeah, just it's it just... It's a handy little trick to know, I mean... If you've got a 64k card or the, or the 8k card, fair enough. I mean, that, this is maybe a bit of a pointless exercise if you do that in its own right. For the multi-cart idea, it is, well, it's working a treat. Should we even play a game? Hold on. It might play a game, it might not. This board's still under repair, it can be a wee bit finicky with its reels. I'm just looking, it's got an exploded capacitor, but never mind. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's working. Yeah. I was messing with the reels by hand earlier, that's why that middle reel sort of span out the sink. Yeah, we've got a one as well. Maybe we'll just gamble it. Yeah. As you can see, it's working perfectly. So I'm not going to go off and think about how I'm going to do the multi car thing. We're all going to base it on this cart. I'll leave that sound ROM in there, but I've got those three ROM spaces up there that I could probably attach some sort of daughter board to. And we'll take it for there. I've got a pick in AVR programmer and I've got some spare picks lying about, so maybe a pick chip controlling those upper address lines and then the MPU4 controls the lower ones. Hmm. Ideas are brewing. Anyways, this will be to be continued.